how close you guys are to some, some top defensive guys. Well, I, I think anytime, anytime you coach at uh, Ohio State University and you're recruiting uh, great kids, you have a chance of getting them. And uh, our kids, have, our, our coaches, I think, have done a great job. We've done a, you know, the thing I'm finding that everybody works together to get the, get the players. You know, it's not about I'm recruiting this guy and you're recruiting that guy. It's a, it's a team effort because when they get here, they're all Ohio State defensive players. And uh, I think right now, I think we're, we're, we're doing well. Our players, you know, if you're a recruit and you come around and you watch our defensive players, I think you have to be excited. You know, I, I know I am because they're, they're young kids. They're, they're uh, great character. They, they love the game, and uh, if, I'm a, if I'm a recruit, I'm seeing that. I'm liking it. Obviously, for years, kids can only take their official visits in the fall. Now they can take it in the summer. I mean, are you a fan of that? Do you like that? Oh, yeah. I, I like it a lot because, uh, you know, it takes your time. You know, that's, that's all part of it. But, I mean, anytime I could play like this, Mickey Marotti, our strength coach, is the best in the country. If you're a recruit and you get a chance to come in the summer and you get a chance to see why so many players have done so well and how so many players have improved themselves and, and have gone on to the NFL, you watch it firsthand. That's a great advantage. You don't always get to do that if you can't come on an official visit in the summer. So despite only having one defensive commit so far, safe to say you are not concerned at all about recruiting? No. No, not at all. And uh, again, I, I got I got to go by if I'm a recruit or if what I see. And I mean, I, I, there, don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. Jeff, Jeff was saying that you guys want to have, make it so that there's a lot of different ways that guys can come in. Maybe there's one package for a guy to be able to contribute. How do you feel like you're able to balance it with getting as many players who deserve to be on the field as possible? Well. <laughs> that's the that's the the very important part about coordinating the defense. Um, you'd love to get very very skilled players a chance to play, but at the same time you have to be very very simple in that you don't want a young man to not play as well as he can because of confusion. And that's always coaches have all this time and they sit and look at things and they go, Oh, that's a great defense. We should do that and do that. And all of a sudden you start looking at it and they're building up. There's a bunch more defenses. There's a bunch more things. And you gotta be really, really conscious of what's gonna allow Chase Young to play the best he can play. What is that call? You know, and if you have three other guys like him up front or too deep of guys like that, what's going to allow them to play the best they can play? And if, if it's five defenses instead of ten, then you play five. But there's also that part where you'd love to get a young freshman or a young sophomore that's really, really starting to prove himself without being having to do everything, plug them into one or two defenses where you have a better athlete running a stunt. Is, is there like an ideal number of defensive packages you want to have in your mind, or is it kind of fluid based on how a season goes? No, you, you get a great feeling, and, and with with our coaches, uh, we've got a great staff, a great defensive staff, and, and you've got a lot of experience, and so what ends up happening is all of a sudden it looks really good to Jeff and I, or Al and I, or and all of a sudden Larry goes, that's a little too much, you know, and pretty soon you go, okay, okay, that's good, let's bring this thing back a little bit, and uh, you know, it's. Uh, I think in the back of your mind, though, I, I know I do personally. We have very talented players. Let's let them play. Let's let's not confuse them. Let's not ever have the thing where all of a sudden during a game they're looking over and going like, you know, what's the call? You know, that's. I think as a coordinator, that has always. That has always been something I, I like have nightmares of when you look over there. You see the guys are going like this, come on, give me the call. And you're going, oh, man, I'm really making it hard on this guy. And you don't want to do that. You know? Greg, if you're, along those lines, if you're personalizing maybe packages for personnel, I'm trying to judge, like, it seems like you guys want to do more varied stuff, multiple defenses than maybe Ohio State has done. And so is that how you narrow it down? Because the players keep talking about simplifying. So if you just have certain two or three responsibilities for 10 different guys, then that expands the package. Is that? sort of the theory there? I know, again, and I'm not saying no, that you're wrong what you're saying. It, here's what it comes down to. What will allow the 11 players 
out there to play the best they can play. I mean, I, like with the way teams run tempo now, and they're trying, what their teams are trying to do is they're trying to make sure you can't get a lot of separate packages in there. They would love nothing more than for Ohio State to be sending in two skilled, fast guys during a play and them get ready to snap the football. I think I think you've all seen that, and I know I wake up in a nightmare seeing too many guys on the field or not enough guys on the field, right? Well, that's what you got to make sure of. You say to yourself, no, no, I, I'm gonna, we have really good players here. Let's get them really feeling good about it. Let's have a package where maybe the 11 that are out there, they may not be as fast as you could put in there, but they're playing faster. And therefore, you play the best guys at that time. Greg, when you come out of the, of the spring, and I don't know if one spring is enough to make a verdict one way or the other on this, but when you evaluate what you did with Brendan and the, 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 the theory behind that, what was your valuation coming out of it and what you think might be for him going forward? Well, I think we, we definitely put him in the best position for his skill level. Um, you know, we, you know we, we play a lot of man coverage. And, you, you know, to play man coverage, you're, as a safety, sometimes you have to have the ability to play down on a slot. You have to play against a really good player. And sometimes there's a lot of there's safeties that can't do that. Therefore, you come up with packages where, you know, Pete Werner is an outstanding football player. Well, you know, him playing outside of the box might not make him as good a player. Well, where Brennan might be. So you come up with what we call a bullet position where this guy can cover that guy. And we're trying to make him that position. And, and that's not always easy, especially when you've had a lot of success playing zone coverage as a free safety. Now you're kind of playing man coverage. Okay, how can we make it best for him? The thing i am really been proud of is ever since the spring, and we had, we had a very good conversation about this, of what he must do what he has to do to improve, what he has to buy into to be the successful player that we want him to be. And he's been all in. And, and I've noticed in the workouts, uh, he's working really hard. So I'm really excited about it. We often talk about summer being a time when players get together, bond, form that chemistry and rapport that they need. There was a lot of defensive staff changeover. Is, is this as essential a time for you guys in that aspect as there it is for the players? Yeah, I mean, I, the bonding part of it, I think the bonding part of it is when you come in at 6 in the morning and you leave at 6 at night. You know, you're in a room right there. And, and one thing, when you have the kind of staff we have, which is... Uh, you know, there's so much experience there. There's so there's so much success that's been in that in those those coaches, uh, and everybody wants to be the best they can be. Everybody wants this to be the best defense ever been, and so you're all working together on it. And uh, the thing I'm so proud of on it is there are egos. It's all about Ohio State. It's all about our defense. It's all about how good can we make this defense. And that's every guy in that room. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I said that to my wife uh, after I was here for a while. I said, man, this is a great defensive staff. And these are guys that you really enjoy coming in to work with every day. And how far along are you toward establishing the kind of culture you want? Because the offensive culture is, is here because there was a lot of continuity in, in staff and whatnot. But how far along are you into establishing the culture you want to see at OSU 13 and one I mean 13 and one yeah okay I, I don't look at stats I don't look at what were you ranked what was a team is made up of three things offense defense and kicking game 13 and one okay yeah we don't be undefeated that's fine okay but the culture the, I watch these players now there's some culture here now you don't work as hard as you've worked in winter conditioning. You don't work as hard as you worked in spring football if there's not culture. It, it's not broken. I mean, these, these players now, this is, these players want to be great. The thing that makes it special and the thing that I'm so excited about is when you look at these kids and, and you, you put in a defense and you say, this is what we're going to do, they look at you and go, okay, let's go. You know, so um, I, I, it's not like you're coming in and you go, wow, we got to fix this. You know, not my opinion. Now, I think this group of coaches and these players, we're excited about, let's see how good we can be this next year. That's the bottom line. Let's be the best we can be. And uh, that's our goal. Just apologies. I didn't mean to imply it was broken. But not all 13 and 1 teams are 
constituted the same way. So right, that's all right. Coach, right. when you look at the linebackers, how, how would you assess that group? And, and do you think you guys will have just three starters that play the most of the way? Do you think you guys might might do a lot of rotating? Well, I, and I'm glad and that's a great question. Uh, that's a really talented group. I mean, that's a group that when you get the 40 times that were just tested and you see them walk in that meeting room every day, you just go, whoa. I mean, some of these guys look like defensive ends and they run four, five, four, six. You know, I think it's a very, very talented group. It's a very deep group. And, uh, and the big thing, we, they're young. And when you're a young football player, you know, you always want to use just talent where you can't do that and be as successful as we want to be and we have to be. So the biggest thing now is fundamentals. Really, really seeing if we can't make that freshman be a junior. You know, if you can't make that sophomore be a senior. And that's what we're trying to do right now. And every day, and Al does a great job of that. We're, you know, we're working on fundamentals, on footwork, on punching the sled, on all those kind of things. And because the talent level, uh, it's a very talented group. Greg, one of the things that Kevin Wilson mentioned, he said this generation of players like, communicates a ton on their phone um, and they need to kind of come a long ways in terms of verbalizing stuff. And the summer is kind of an opportunity for that where they can work on communication and that sort of thing. Has, has that been your experience? Is yeah, uh, there's no question. And I think, and we talked about that today, ironically, you must have been in our meeting because, uh, yeah. or, or not our meeting, but when we were walking around out here in uh, uh, the first thing we talked about is that one of the biggest things we have to do is we have to communicate. We have to communicate. And the point I brought up with the linebackers is this might be the best defensive line around. Let's make sure they're set. Let's make sure they're lined up because you don't want them to be confused. So your job as a linebacker, number one, is get to get that talented big group in front of you set. Then you can have a lot more fun playing. And, uh, you know, that's we talked about that already. Greg, you don't have a position group. How is that good and how is that maybe a challenge well I have I do kind of have a position group and then I've been working with the Sams okay, okay? and and I tried at first not uh, I've coached a long time I couldn't do it I mean after a while I go what am I doing you know I felt like I was cheating you know and uh, so I uh, no, I'm coaching the Sam linebackers and I'm working with Al because uh, that you got to work them together so but that it's been very positive that way because it's not like when you're coaching 20 guys because a lot of time for me has to be the practice schedule, the playbook, that kind of thing. And so it's worked out good. Can you give your assessment of the Sam's? Where they, where they stand right now. Well, I, you know, I think uh, I think Pete Werner had a really, really good spring, and I, I, I think he's going to be a heck of a football player. And uh, and, and and Brandon White again being uh, a bullet is like a Sam. So you know he's done a good job. Uh, uh, Wint Jason Wint has done a really good job. K Pope, um, we've got a lot of talent there. I know you've got uh, Kate Stover coming in as well at that Sam spot. What what are your just first impressions of him? I can't wait. That's my first impression. I can't wait. I watched him play basketball. I watched him uh, work out. I can't wait. Do you think he'll be able to stay at linebacker? I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Greg Young, where, where do you see him fitting at? He's kind of at a position. Boy, he's a great athlete. I was watching him run the other day. Wow, he's a great athlete. A lot of times with a young guy, it all depends on how mature he is in picking things up. It goes back to the first thing we talked about. I don't know if you were here, but the first thing we talked about is you got to make sure when you have very talented athletes that you don't give them so much that you slow them down. That's happened to a lot of people where you know a lot of football and you try to put all that football in and pretty soon that 4-6 becomes a 4-8. And then that's not good coaching. And uh, so, you know, he, he would be an example right now. I mean, he's, he's, he's got a lot of athleticism that you might put him in for one or two defenses if you could do that, you know, or one or two packages where you could get him to do some things that use his skill level. What are the positions that are like two more on questions the table for coach. him right now? I mean, I don't know if there are any positions that are on the table. You know, I mean, you know, as far as you say, I mean, as far as – what we were worried about, or is that what your question? Like linebackers, safety. Uh, I'm not, not the way I've seen our kids work out. Uh, I'm not going into this that way. We're, we're going to be as good as we can be. Jaden McKenzie, too. What, what does he bring to the defensive line as a, as a first year guy? Just I haven't seen him enough yet. I haven't seen him do anything. I haven't seen any of that other than run. I love his size. I love his attitude. I love what he looks like. But I haven't seen that. The other kids I've seen, like I've seen Cade play basketball. 
you know I've seen those other guys but I you know I love how he looked you know I like that whole class is a great looking group you mentioned you Mickey Marotti to start um, you also worked with him in Florida um, what does he do that's so integral and people rave about him in the oh, I, I've worked with him eight years at uh, Notre Dame and uh, three years at Florida and uh, I, there's not a better strength coach in America I mean this guy this guy works the players as, at the top level of how you have to work to get good. He's, he's cutting edge always on what's the best thing to do. And then he works them extremely hard and they listen to him and they believe in him and he's got their back. I mean, this guy, I mean, he gives every single thing he has to this team. And uh, that's, why, that's why the players have improved the most, I think, of anybody. From your perspective, how has this offense evolved from when you got used to practice against it at Florida to now? The offense? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. I, Tim Tebow's not there. <laughs> you know, I, I don't. I, I don't know that question. I mean, I don't. Believe me, when I got here, I did not look too much about what kind of offense we're running here. I don't really. I know it's going to be really good. You know, I have no doubts about that. All I was, all I was concerned with is in making sure how the defense does. Greg, you worked with a great defense last year, at least until the very end. Sorry. Um, when you look at this defense Madison. potentially, where does, I'm not saying to compare them, but can you get to be an elite defense? How confident are you that you can? Well, that's what we're expecting. That's what we're expecting. Uh, I just nothing, anything else, uh, I'll be disappointed. From what I've seen. From what I've seen of how they played when I watched film, from what I've seen of them conditioning and working in the weight room, and from what I've seen um, this 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 summer working out, uh, it can't be any higher. Greg, how much do you these Last days? Right I don't know if simpler is the right term, but offenses do a lot of stuff. I mean, there's no. Nobody lining up in a wishbone just running the, the option or the I formation stuff. Does that does that make you uh, basically from a defense standpoint have to stay a little more simple and rely on ability more than anything else? I mean, how would you describe it from it's your very, challenge? Very, very. He'd be a very successful coach. I mean, the truth that's what you hit it right on the head, and and I've I've made that mistake before where I mean you start trying to do too much and teams start spreading you out and they start tempoing you and they and all of a sudden you say why aren't you playing as good well coach i'm trying to think i'm trying to you know like i said before the thing is a as a coordinator that kills you is to see one of your defensive linemen running on the field as fast as he can to change from one position one group to another you just go oh that's so ugly why is that happening and that's what offenses have done so therefore, you got to have enough good players and have enough enough scheme in the group that's out there that you can make it hard on them, but make it simple enough for your players. You know, you used to love to put different guys oh, yeah, in, cool. penny package, nickel package, dime package. That's what they're doing. They're keeping you from doing that. You know. Thanks, man. Yep. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, you bet, guys.